been about a month since my last trip but I'm back uh, and I am super excited to be out I've been looking forward to this trip all week so I'm on the uh, escarpment above the south coast of New South Wales it's a relatively large flat area but it's very rugged um, and I've got about 10 k's of off-track walking ahead of me today um, it's more of an adventure hiking type trip and the objective is to find a small and hopefully secret hidden valley um, but also to be able to camp on top of a cliff overlooking a river gorge. So that's the plan. Who knows if I'll actually get that far or make it. Uh, it's going to be spectacular. I hope I can get there. Um, I'm just crossing, about to come up to my first creek crossing. Um, and already the, uh, <laughs> the vegetation is pretty thick and uh, the topography is a little bit more than what, uh, what the topographic maps and the satellite imagery suggested it would be. But nonetheless, this is what it's all about. It's about getting out here and seeing what it's like. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. So i am uh, just made my way down the creek. I have to get up there and over that little ridge. But this veg right here in the, in the creek line is bloody thick. Um, it's the way it goes. I expected there to be some thick vegetation, but it's going to be a bit of a challenge to push through this stuff. Um, I have found that for whatever reason, when YouTube processes the video, that the it just cannot handle the the shots of moving through the vegetation. Otherwise, I'll um, I'll take you with me. But there's not a lot of point because the video gets distorted. But you can just see how how thick that is. But uh, there's nothing for it except to go straight through. So. Uh, just looking for an easy uh, entrance point. So hopefully the video is a little bit clearer when I'm not moving around. So there's not a lot of water here, but just to give you an idea of just how thick this stuff is. So anyway, onwards. I am literally oh, just pushing my way through this stuff. Everything interlocks and forms this basically impenetrable barrier. Oh. It's hard work guys. So I've just broken through the uh, thick band of vegetation and I'm in the creek. There's a small amount of water here. Um, not much, but enough if I need it. I've actually got about six litres of water with me. So my bag's very heavy. Um, but we've been in drought for so long. Yeah, being caught with that water is not much fun. So I've got plenty with me. Okay, so I'm through. Now I just need to find a way out. Uh, that probably looks like the best and safest way out. In this kind of uh, sandstone type country, you often get these little overhangs forming at the top of um, creek lines and cliff lines. So that would be a really neat little uh, shelter if you uh, got caught out for whatever reason. Look at this stuff. It's uh, some sort of lichen and it grows fairly commonly up, up on these escarpments. But if you can see the, uh, the structure of it, it's just like a, a matrix kind of tube. It's really, yeah. I've never stopped and had a close look at it before, but <laughs> pretty cool. So this is pretty challenging country to walk through. Um, it's certainly not for the inexperienced to get out here and do this kind of stuff. I am um, reasonably experienced. I've done this for about 10 years or so um, and I've got a lot of equipment with me. I also have a satellite equipped uh, personal locator beacon because out here there is no phone reception. Um, yeah, how do you navigate through this sort of country? Everything looks the same. The visibility is reasonably obscured so it's very difficult to get landmarks. Uh, so what I do is I use 
technology. Technology is my friend. Basically, I'm using a GPS enabled phone. Um, I have satellite imagery and topographic maps overlaid on that. And from the imagery, you can see because we're on these little, uh, this plateau type country, there are lots of uh, open outcrops basically. So this is really easy walking through here, but then it's each of these outcrops is surrounded by a band of quite thick vegetation. And so I'm using a, a line or a track that I plotted on Google Earth. I've imported that to my phone and that's trying to maximize the uh, most uh, number of these open patches that I can. And that's the way I'm kind of getting to my objective. So if you're trying to work simply off compass bearings or uh, map to that imagery, you're gonna take a lot more time through the vegetation, but I still carry a compass with me um, just in case. If my phone were to run out of battery, I've got a big battery pack, uh, or uh, you know, it was to stop working. I have a compass and I have a, a pretty good idea of the direction I need to go to get back to the car. And I, I can kind of uh, find my way to a creek line and follow that most of the way. So um, I do have a, a contingency, but yeah, that's, that's how I'm getting through this country. Well, that was interesting. It's probably been about half an hour since I uh, last spoke to camera. Um, I just got a little bit disoriented. So not, a, not afraid to admit it. I was doubting that the GPS was right and I was thinking I was right. Of course I wasn't. I just got a little bit disoriented. Um, so what I've done is I found a little bit of high ground so I can see the surrounding topography. And so what I've done here is I've just correlated my position with the landscape using the contour lines on topographic map. So I can see that um, there should be a water body or like a, a creek forming down here, which there is. And I can also see that there should be some uh, ridge lines to this direction and to this direction, which there are. So I'm now confident again that I am exactly where my uh, GPS and maps are telling me that I am. But yeah, um, a little bit unnerving to be honest. and. Um, Really important in those sort of scenarios is just to stop, uh, think it through, and then try and work out a plan to make sure you can confirm your location. So that's what I've done, um, and back on track. But yeah, this country, this is, it all looks the same, and it definitely plays tricks in your mind, so. Aussie green and gold. It's early, early September, so spring started and some of the flowers are coming out. So uh, you've got these little white ones over here, really tiny and delicate little flowers. You know, there's my finger for comparison. Uh, yeah, it's nice to nice to be out. It's um, it's actually quite cool today. I think it's about eight degrees, so not exactly springtime weather, but I'm certainly uh, working up a sweat going through this vegetation so yeah they're nice to be out the banks is out this is brilliant color and uh yeah then the the wattle from the acacia plant as well just uh, <laughs> absolutely beautiful I've just uh, found myself in this wattle grove. Looks rather spectacular with all the yellow out. Very cool. So while most of this um, landscape is dominated by the, the sort of the sandstone plateau, you do get these small patches where I guess they're depressions and you get uh, some soil build up over time. Yeah, just enough soil here to sustain some larger trees. And then it won't be long before we're back out on the, the plateau. Oh, it's tiring. 
this is the reality of off-track walking in Australia is that you need to contend with this kind of stuff guys the thing that makes it really challenging is have these um, kind of pliable but very tough shrubs so they're just too thick to break but they bend and they come with you and they sort of tangle up and then you have this layer of dead fallen timber which kind of gets you the other way so you just get completely tied up in it it is hard work and it takes takes time and it takes energy oh i'm hoops guys that has been hard work um it's really difficult to stay on the line that you plot to follow on the gps so kind of got a little bit um sidetracked back there but definitely time for some lunch All right, so it's going to be some sort of wrap concoction for lunch. So I got uh, got some fresh basil, just for a bit of a uh, bit of flavour and a bit of green. Got some uh, saltbush cheese, a couple of decent chunks, and then I've got some awesome uh, brassola. So uh, looking forward to this. Well, it's good, quick little lunch. Um, feeling better after that, for sure, having a bit of food. Uh, but as soon as I've stopped, it's got really cold. So, like I said, I think it's about eight, maybe 10 degrees at the moment. Um, so definitely not a warm day. I'm about halfway, just a bit under of where I want to get to. So I'm gonna keep uh, keep going. It's just gone 1.30, so I've been walking for probably about three hours now. And uh, hopefully I can speed up some parts of it. And I'm gonna probably do a little bit less filming, um, just so I make sure I get to, get to where I want to get to and if I don't then I find a, a suitable spot to camp for the night. How cool is this? All oh, these little flowers are just coming out in this uh, little patch. So awesome. The Australian bush can be a very unfriendly place and uh, that is evidenced by these hakias. Look at the look at the spines on that and these plants are just everywhere so you're kind of walking through them. Good times! So this is pretty cool, I just found myself in this stand of really old, probably ancient Mallard eucalypts. You can see the size of this one here. It's been completely hollowed out by fire. You can see you're going now all the way through. The will to leave is pretty strong. <laughs> These trees are huge given where they're growing. The size of that is uh, that's a good meter across there, the trunk. And geez, tell you what, you don't see them very often. Absolutely awesome. So I'm in a really, really thick patch of vegetation. It doesn't get any thicker than this, guys. Oh, everything's prickly. It should only be 20 meters long or something, but bloody hell. Oh, this is very average. So it's nearly three o'clock and I've got about three hours of light left. Um, I'm going through at the moment, uh, which is the fourth fourth water crossing, which is just, just around here. 
Um, but then once I hit this stuff up here, it should be much easier going and that'll be the home straight for sure. So, oh, looking forward to getting through this, the last of this thick bit, hitting that uh, sandstone highway and then, uh, yeah, getting camp set up. Lots of water. Um, it's kind of annoying because it means I could have not lugged an extra four kilos in my bag, but what's really good is this is only probably a good hour or so from where, or maybe an hour and a half, two hours where I'm going to camp from. So it means I can use what I've got with me tonight and I have to conserve it. Uh, and then I can come back here and I'll mark it on my GPS. So uh, I'll come back here in the morning and I'll fill up for the walkout. Well, I'm on the home run, home stretch now. I've just uh, finished off that fourth creek crossing. Climbed up the slope and through some really thick veg. But now, most of the rest of the walk should be like this, nice and open. And that makes me quite excited, to be honest. So it's actually worth uh, showing you guys that there is absolutely nothing around here except wilderness in every single direction. <sighs> I think I've got a good chance of making the uh, making the campsite that I wanted to make, and that'll be awesome. That'll be perched uh, perched on the cliffs above above the gorge, and that'll be pretty spectacular. So, oh, hang in there; it'll be worth it. I hope. Well, I've made the uh, made the sort of distance that I was hoping to do, and now you can just see across there. I'm sorry it's so dark. The uh, the weather's been really strange. So, if you can, on the other side of the the distance there, there is a gorge wall. So now I'm making my way um, towards the cliff, and unfortunately, it's a bit of bush bashing again. Uh, but yeah, the idea is to hopefully get a nice flat rock on top of the cliffs and pitch up the tent and enjoy the view. So we'll see how we go. It's, uh, I did some really good distance then. It's quarter to four now. So uh, I think, yeah, covered a couple of Ks in half an hour. So that was pretty good. Uh, but yeah, now just a little bit of this, this kind of stuff. Oh, it is nice when a plan comes together. This, uh, this little hidden secret valley that I was telling you about at the start is actually a little bit uh, a little bit deeper than I was expecting. So I think I can find a, a way in here. I'll have to go down and have a look. But then hopefully it's not too hard to pick a way up across the top on the other side. Oh, wow. Well. Tell you what, looking forward to pitching a tent, that's for sure. Uh, I think, given I'm so close now, I'm going to press on, but I've probably got another half hour or so in me, and then, I, then it's probably time to start thinking about uh, stopping for the day. So anyway, I better get going. I think this should be achievable. Uh, so I've just walked a little bit further on top of the cliffs, um, and I suspect it might be better to keep going down here a bit. This is actually pretty tricky country. I'm getting a bit tired, so I want to make sure I take my time and, and find a safe way in and out on the other side. Absolutely stunning though. This rock is uh, yeah phenomenal. What a what a beautiful little hidden valley. Okay, I'm just trying to find a way down. Um, I've climbed down some rocks here, but the options are not looking particularly flash, to be honest. So I think I'm gonna have to, I could go down here, but it's a little bit sketchy, and once I go down here, I'm committed, so 
I think I'm going to climb back up and around and hopefully I can find a, an easy way down there. Found a pretty cool little cave. It's not safe to camp in because there's evidence of rockfall. But uh, always cool to find these little places. I'm about halfway down. And it's proven to be quite challenging. So really just taking my time and, and assessing all the options. And that looks like it'll probably do it. Yeah, I think I'll climb down there and around and over and up again. Oh, well, I'm almost in. Haven't got far to go now. And I'm in this cool little hidden valley. So I'm about halfway up the other side. I'm just uh, following the, the base of the rocks here and looking for a way through. I think I have found one over there, just in the little gap. So I'm going to walk over there and, and have a look. Um, there's usually a way through. I've seen a couple which I could probably do, but I'd prefer not to. Um, just because it's a little bit sketchy. So work over that one. That one looks good from here. And then hopefully I can get up on top. So yeah, getting close. So far, so good. That's exactly what I was hoping for. There's a couple of big rocks there, which hopefully aren't too bad to navigate, but I should better walk up here. Alrighty, here's the first rock, and there's the second one. Okay, right, just at the top of the second rock. Whew. That's where I came from. Oh. All right, now let's hope there's a, uh, a flat bit of ground to put the tent on. <laughs> oh, wait till you see what I turn the camera around. Holy moly! Oh, what a view! Oh. oh, that is four to five hundred meters below me, that creek. I am so knackered, guys. I need to find a flat bit of rock to camp, preferably with a view. Oh. So I've had to backtrack a little bit, but this actually is fairly climbable and lots of, uh, lots of grip. So I think I'll be quite safe doing that. And then I should be on the uh, the tallest bit of rocks overlooking uh, the Trimmer Gorge. So that's been a good day's work. <sighs> Made it. <sighs> this is kind of amazing. That's about as close as I'm going to go. <sighs> Absolutely phenomenal. Well, I think it was worth it. It was bloody hard work. I'm not going to lie to you. That was a, was a tough day of walking, but yeah, I'm I'm not unhappy with the view, to be honest. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty pretty good. It's really dark. Um, it's been dark all day, and I, I, yeah, it's really really bizarre. You can see some light poking out over there. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, the camera is doing a good job of making it look a little bit lighter than it actually is, which is nice. So I've been here probably for about half an hour. I've just been sort of drinking a little bit of water, trying to rehydrate and gather my thoughts. Um, so the next thing I need to do is set up the tent. Um, I've got a couple of options. Now, there is a bit of a sheltered spot here. Um, the, winds, the winds are predicted to pick up overnight. Um, and so I'm obviously fairly exposed here on the top of the cliff. So this is one option. Um, if I walk over, walk over the little rise here. Oh, tell you what, legs are feeling it. There's also this um, quite a quite a nice spot in here. It's not as flat, 
but uh, it's reasonably sheltered. It's got a little bit of protection from the rocks there and the bushes, so that's good. And there's another spot over here. Now this one doesn't have as good a view and I'm not I'm not sure how protected it's going to be but it has very very flat very very flat rock so it's just uh, just over there just near that water uh, just over there so conundrum I'm not sure where to put it up to be honest so I don't really want to be exposed in winds but having hiked all the way up here I kind of want to have the spot with the best view so I just got to weigh it up and uh, yeah make a decision. Got some light drizzle so um I'm going to try and get the tent up now and avoid uh, anything getting wet. I don't think there's much in it, but yeah, it's unfortunate. So, um, quick and dirty job, got the tent up, uh, and it's just about stopped raining, which is pretty typical, isn't it? <laughs> um, so I'm not, not convinced I'm going to have the tent here, but um, I've got to set up. It's freestanding, so I can just move it pretty easily. But it's not a bad spot, let's be honest. <sighs> uh, so when you're... Um, <clears throat> When you're camping on rocks, you obviously can't stake your tent. But a good uh, a good trick is to use rocks and pegs. So you use the, the peg to go under the rock, and then find a, a rock or two just to hold it in place. That's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Figure out where the nice taut pitch is. A little bit of adjustment. That is not too shabby. Not sure how much that amazing sunset you're getting, but it is pretty good. I'm just going to get a few rocks. Uh, I've got my trusty leather gloves, and I'm just going to make a bit of a fireplace. Um, I don't normally bother about it, but I'm conscious of where I am and I don't really want there to be any sort of incidents. So I'm just gonna do a little uh, ring or two of rocks just to give the fire some wind protection. Okay, uh, fireplace is built. It's nothing, uh, nothing flash, but it's going to do the job quite nicely, I think. Um, I'm only having a really small fire tonight. Um, I have collected a little bit of firewood. There's not a lot of hardwood up here, 
there's a few gum trees around which is the only hardwood up here the rest is um, shrubs gotta say I have earned this today so just gonna relax and uh, drink my beer and then um, chucked on a couple of big bigger bits so hopefully I have some coals and I can cook up my chicken and uh, just got the water in the billy and that'll do rice and veggies so cheers guys I probably walked more than 10 kilometers and um, there were some pretty thick sections of vegetation there which yeah it took uh, took a lot of effort to get through and um, oh, feeling it but quickly rejuvenating and recovering so so I've just um, cut up some green beans and some broccoli I'm just going to chuck these in the hot water I'm going to give them probably just a couple of minutes on the heat and then the rice is going to go in with them Alrighty, so the veggies have been on for a couple of minutes I don't, even, don't want them to get too soft and they're going to be in there a while So, I've got um, Continental Thai coconut and lemongrass rice. I've been using this stuff been using this stuff all year. It's just fantastic. It's like really cheap, really tasty. You'll have seen it in a bunch of my videos, but yeah, highly recommended. We get a reasonably flat lay. So tonight's star is a bit of chicken in a tamarind lime marinade. Uh, I did freeze it overnight, so it has um, it has thawed out. But because of that, I'm going to cook it just a little bit longer than normal, just to make sure it is uh, safe to eat. But I. Uh, the temperature of that is is really quite good, so I don't have any concerns. Get a close up of it. Ooh, yeah, um, I've just got the lid off the billy too. Just um, I think I had a little bit too much water in there, so just evaporating some of that off. While I'm waiting for the chicken to cook, I thought I'd show you my little uh, Victorinox uh, Walker. This is a, an awesome little knife I've had for a few months now. Um, it's basically just got a knife. It's got on this side a uh, little kind of screwdriver and bottle opener. And then the awesome thing is it has a, it has a saw. Now this is a um, 84 millimeter knife. So it's seven millimeters I think that's right, if my maths is correct. Seven millimeters shorter than the regular traditional type of sasami knife. But it's so light, um, really compact. Yeah, I just, I just dig it. I carry this thing with me all the time. Um, I put a little lany lanyard on it with a double snake knot. But awesome, awesome bit of kit. I think I paid about $24 off eBay. So um, if you're after just a, a lightweight kind of hiking style type of tool, Highly recommended. I just, yeah, I, I dig it. I think it's just awesome. So. Alrighty, the chicken is almost done. Um, I've just cut it into a few pieces. It was cooking pretty well by itself, to be honest. But it's a pretty thick chicken breast, and uh, I've got a long, tough hike out tomorrow, and I can't afford to get sick, so I'm not taking any chances. I'm literally barbecuing it. Um, it smells amazing, and I'm getting pretty bloody hungry now, so it uh, won't be too far off, but... The uh, rice and the veggies are good, so they're just keeping warm by the fire. And uh, this little fire, even though I don't have a lot of hardwood here, is, is throwing out a bit of heat, so the, the rocks are obviously helping reflect some of that backwards. My excellent girlfriend got me a sort of bunch of craft beers for my birthday a couple of weeks back, and I have been looking forward to this one ever since. And so, um, as soon as I knew I was coming out for a trip, I saved it. 
And uh, so this is a filter Caribbean stout. All right, the barbecue chicken is, I think, pretty much perfect. So I'm gonna take a couple of chunks off and cut it up and put it in my rice. Uh, and happy days. Leather gloves are awesome. Get a pair. Yep. So just to make double sure, I'm gonna cut into the thickest piece, which is this one here. Oh, that looks, that looks pretty good. One pot dish tonight. So I don't have a plate. Oh, rice, veggies and chicken. All right, I am starving. Mm. This is a ginormous meal, like it's really big, but I burnt so much energy today. I'm gonna eat all of it. So, it's kind of uh, very eerie to walk up to the edge of the cliff at night because it is just black <laughs> definitely not going anywhere near that anyway yes yeah, so I've done a, a few trips out in this sort of country of uh, late um, another trip I did was a trip to the cave where I camped in the cave and if you haven't seen that one yet definitely worth going back and having a look at that that was pretty cool just a really quick trip but awesome to be able to sort of just camp underneath an overhang and uh, be nice and uh, warm and dry when the rain came so that was great uh, so yeah this is probably the third time in well actually it's probably less than a year so what is it yeah actually third time in six months to be honest um, that I've been out in this general area and yeah it's um for me this is a Trema Gorge is is really a special place to me it's um I've been coming here for about 10 years or so a lot of those trips have been with Alex from my first video um, but it's just a, it's a part of the world that has literally grabbed me. And yeah, when I when I think about being out in the wilderness, sitting around a fire, I, I often associate it with being out here. So I have a really strong connection to this place. Um, and I just love being here. So even though it was a tough day today, really, really uh, just, it's always great to be here. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how, I don't know, I guess people have connections with different places and for me, for me, it's this place, and I kind of, I don't know, have an interest in exploring all of it. And uh, I've been doing it for ten years, and I've done the whole gorge, and now I'm kind of venturing out more on top and seeing the plateau country, and it's uh, it's fascinating. So I have just been enjoying the the still and the calm, and can kind of, um, if I sit a little bit higher away from the fire, the stars are just amazing. Um, I would try and show you, but I know it's the camera is not going to pick it up. But um, yeah, the Milky Way is out in force, and really enjoying being up top. Um, I'm not going to enjoy the hike out tomorrow, that's for sure. It's <laughs> it's just going to take time and take a bit of effort. So yeah, that's how you get to see the amazing places. Just letting the fire burn down now. I'm pretty pretty buggered. It's um, uh, just up to nine o'clock, so it's going to be an early night for me, that's for sure. Found a little bit of mobile phone signal, much to my um, surprise. Um, there are some pockets up on the top of the, the cliffs. I guess I'm at about 750 metres above sea level, so um, I guess I've just picked up a tower from one of the surrounding towns. But um, So I was able to text my girlfriend, let her know that I was all right, which is, uh, which is always good because, yeah, it's never much fun uh, being uh, at home and not knowing how things are going. So... Oh, so uh, inside the tent, a little bit of a breeze has picked up. Um, it's nothing too bad at this stage. Um, with all the she oaks around, have these long, thin sort of pine needles. Um, it sounds probably worse than it is. A little bit of a shake of the tent, but nothing too bad. Um, I'll obviously keep an eye on it, and uh, if I think it's getting too strong, then I'll uh, reevaluate. I've got a, a spot that I can. This is a freestanding tent, so I can basically pick it up and move it over there um, if I need to. Um, but I don't think I'll have to do that. 
anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to sleep. So, good night. Oh, good morning. Well, uh, it's a fairly eventful night. So uh, not long after I uh, sort of said goodnight, um, it was getting pretty comfy, uh, everything was going well, and then got some pretty big gusts of wind, um, and I just wasn't comfortable where I was, so um, sort of the tent started moving quite a lot. So I decided at about 11 o'clock last night to pack up and relocate, um, and I'm really glad I did, because the last few hours have been super windy, uh, and I just would have been hammered over there, so um, I've come to the spot which had the flatter rock. Um, it's about 20 meters from the other spot, but it is definitely more sheltered. So the tent held up a treat. Um, I've got some big, bigger rocks just to wedge the pegs in, um, and it weathered everything that the uh, the wind could throw at it. So yeah, it's a good good move, um, and it took probably 20 minutes to pack everything up and relocate. So. Unfortunately, yeah, the, the spot that I chose probably through tiredness mostly <laughs> yesterday wasn't the best, but um, oh, the wind's dried off now. It's um, a little bit breezy, but the gusts have gone, which is great. So, uh, yeah, 20 past six, time to, um, time to get a coffee on the go and some breakfast. So I think what I will do though is pack up and then I'm gonna relocate back to where I was um, last night and have a coffee and uh, have some porridge and then uh, enjoy the view for a bit and, and head on out of here, so. Oh. Alrighty. Let's go have a wander down and see the gorge. So. so last night I was just camping on the other side of that rock there. Um, just up top, so a little bit higher, but closer to the cliff. And so the, the updrafts coming from the, the gorge below were we're, um, yeah, pretty strong, so. Oh, check this out. Oh, look at this. So it's basically camping on top of, top of here. Um, yeah, I think I'll go back there and, and have the, have a coffee, but yeah, look at this, just absolutely takes the breath away. So yeah, the old, uh, the old Nemo Dagger 2P held up quite well last night. Uh, I don't think it would have held up nearly as well in my original spot, but... Yeah. Not a bad place to wake up.
this is a hell of a place to have a coffee and just to kind of lose yourself in the moment and enjoy this amazing place. So that's what I've been doing for the last half hour or so. It is just phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really difficult to describe and I know that the, the videos uh, are not doing it justice, but hopefully you get a, a sense at least of just how magical this place is. I'm gonna enjoy the view probably for another half hour or so, I think. I just really try and soak it in and then, um, yeah, I've got a really tough day ahead of me today, so I've gotta go back to the car. Um, it's now quarter to eight, so I try and um, get going at least by 8.30, if not a little bit earlier. And that way I should be back at the car, hopefully between three and four o'clock. And then um, got a two hour drive ahead of me, so. It's, uh, the gorge itself is still in, in shadow. I can, um, I don't know how well it's coming out in the video, but there is a, uh, a nice stretch there of sort of sandy, rocky gorge bed with um, some nice big rock pools in there. Gee, it looks pretty spectacular from up here. I'm just about all packed up. Um, it's 25 past eight, so another five minutes just to enjoy the view. I've just seen something really cool. Um, over here, that's where I took mum for a coffee uh, a couple of months back. So um, that was a hell of a lot easier to get to than this place, that's for sure. But nice to be able to see it from this angle anyway. Unfortunately, it's time to head out, so it's gonna be a tough walk. Uh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to it, to be honest. So, uh, so, I've been underway for about 40 minutes. I've just come through that little secret valley, which is down there. And I've just found a way up the, the cliff, which was frankly much better than it was yesterday. Um, I wasn't looking forward to coming up that way, it was a bit sketchy, so I hunted around and found a nice ramp to walk up. Oh, so I'm just going to have a drink of water and then uh, the march continues. Not a bad view though. So it's just gone uh, 10 o'clock, so I'm making good progress. I'm back at the creek. This is where I filled up water yesterday. So this is the first of four creek crossings for the day. Um, this one's got water in it and the last one has water in it. And the middle two are dry. So I'm uh, just taking the opportunity to have a quick break. I'm gonna drink as much water as I can and then fill up. And I'll carry two liters with me for the rest of the day. And that should be enough to get me back to the car. So making good progress. Unfortunately, that was the easy part. Um, smashed out a couple of k's then <sighs> but yeah doing well well progress is going pretty well it's just after 11 o'clock and I've just made it through the second creek so probably 40 45 percent of the way back to the car uh, it's it's funny you kind of put up this stuff when you're on your way somewhere because it's you know you have an objective in mind you go it's gonna be an awesome view it's gonna be an awesome camp but on the way home you just want to get through it as quickly as possible the um the veg is just nasty it's dry it's woody uh, it's about thumbs thumb size so you can't break it and it just folds around you and it's just nasty so i haven't filmed much today um it's super windy as you can hear so um 
yeah, there's not much point having all the wind noise on the camera, but yeah, it's going pretty well. Um, Well, made it. Um, pretty good time too, actually. So yesterday, I think it, I took about six and a half hours and today I did it in four and a half. So two hours quicker. Now, part of that's going to be because uh, I had less weight in the pack. So it was easy to, to uh, travel through that country. Um, but I think a big part of it was on the way back, I was really focusing my efforts on trying to stick to the line that I plotted on the satellite imagery uh, and use the GPS to its full advantage. So there's a couple of times yesterday on the walk in where I actually, um, yeah, deviated a couple, a couple of times and, and that I think added a lot of painful bush bashing. So there's a, a lot less of that today. Um, yeah, pretty happy with that. Um, there's always a good sense of accomplishment when you um, sort of set out to do something, you, you plan it, you, you sort of go and do it and then you sort of, you get back and uh, you get back safe. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Um, look, Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate your support. Um, if you have any questions, please drop me a comment. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time. See ya.